Joining us now on our panel, Julia Hassler is a Republican and the president of Libertad Club Hispano Republicano de Pasco. Natasha Sutherland is the deputy director of Florida Watch, and Craig Patrick is the political editor and chief investigative reporter at Fox 13 News. Nice to have you all here. Thank you for coming by Florida this week. Former U.S. Senator and two-term Florida Governor Bob Graham, who gained national prominence as chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee and is an early critic of the Iraq War, has died. He was 87. He grew up on his family's dairy farm in Dade County. He was a millionaire, Harvard-educated lawyer. Graham was known for his work days when he would take a new job for a day, such as a waiter, a tomato picker, a factory worker, or a department store Santa. It was his way to meet and connect with ordinary folks. Over the course of five decades in public life, he had a total of 408 outside workdays. Graham was among the earliest opponents of the Iraq War, saying it diverted America's focus on the battle against terrorism. He was also critical of President George W. Bush for failing to have an occupation plan in Iraq after the U.S. military threw out Saddam Hussein in 2003. He co-chaired the 9-11 Congressional Commission. Later, Graham called for full disclosure about possible Saudi Arabian government involvement in the September 11th terror attacks. So, Craig, this week, many politicians of all political parties, I mean, President Biden, former President Obama, Nancy Pelosi, Democrats, but then many Republicans said nice things about Graham. Former Governor Jeb Bush did, Governor DeSantis, Senator Rick Scott, CFO Jimmy Petronas, even the Republican Party put out a statement, program, this week. Why do you think he was able to get that much, uh, you know, uh, uh, how many people, were, I mean, that... Yeah, he was a consummate consensus builder. He was a moderate who was very passionate about his state. You see his legacy in so many different ways, ways you may not realize from the widening of Dale Mabry Highway in Tampa to the Skyway Bridge that bears his name, its stability and its safety, certainly heading to our south, the preservation and protection and restoration of the Everglades. He started that, and then all across the state, there was an economic boom on his watch, but he also balanced that with smart growth. He gave us the era of growth management laws that were dismantled some 30 years later, but it still reduced urban sprawl much more than we otherwise would have seen. And then once he left the Senate, among other things, he co-chaired the investigation of the BP oil disaster and recommended changes to prevent a similar such disaster. He also was a very outspoken advocate for teaching civics in our schools. Something that Graham often said is that there's a certain core of politicians uh, who think it's to their advantage to have citizens not very well informed because it makes them easier to get reelected. So he always pressed for schools to teach students to be more engaged so that our government would be more responsive. And I think we're seeing the legacy of that in so many different ways. Uh, he was very popular. And by the way, his successor was former Governor Bob Martinez. He told mm -hmm. us this week that he thought that he was not, not just polite and collegial, but was always on the right side of the issues. When are you going to hear that in today's mm -hmm. climate? A Republican saying his Democratic predecessor was always right on the issues. That's why Graham left office as governor with an 83% approval rating unheard of in today's world. That really is. Mm -hmm. Natasha, Graham once said uh, this about his job as governor. He said, we work for all the taxpayers of the state of Florida, not just the ones who vote for me. Is that era over where we see politicians trying to bridge the gap? I really hope not. Um, you know, Bob Graham, he served with integrity, honesty, decency, and compassion. And it's been really incredible to see the outpouring from folks on both sides of the aisle that reflect on his life of service and leadership. Um, he was a champion for everyday working Floridians. I mean, even his commitment to periodic work days um, where he, he took on hundreds of jobs. Um, and I think it really showed his commitment to walking in all of our shoes um, to show how much he cared. Um, and I really hope that this isn't the last that we'll see of, um, you know, magnificent politicians like him. And I know that he will be sorely missed. So um, he definitely set an example that I hope that politicians in Florida will, uh, will strive for. Julie, do you think we can get back to those days? Well, we certainly should in many ways because whomever is in leadership is representing if if they already won they have a position of responsibility for every citizen of our florida mm -hmm. so whether it's this county or that one i'm from pasco 
you know, we all have to understand that there is, people are watching, and he was certainly a people person. So that's why he identified with different jobs, just to show, I mean, just to even know how hard it was to be a waiter, to be a, a farm worker, to be in any type of uh, position. Yeah, a lot so. of those were blue collar jobs. Yes. Yeah. One is a